All right, what I'm going to do today is take you through the calculations for the lab for gravimetrical analysis or on the empirical formula. And so you should have the data table copied into your notebook. Um, if you did not get the data down, this is what you need to have. So if you don't have this written down, pause the video and get this jotted down because I'm going to kind of keep going. Okay, now before we go any further, the what I want you to write down is the chemical reaction that we would have seen if our lab worked completely, and some did and some didn't. Um, it's actually a very similar chemical reaction to something we saw earlier this year in that we took magnesium solid, okay, and we heated it, which caused it to react with the oxygen in the atmosphere. And what we are trying to determine is what is the molecular, or excuse me, the empirical formula of magnesium oxide. Now, we could write it because we know how to name it. Um, in fact, if we give the what it should be, or the expected value, if you take magnesium, which is a 2 plus, oxide is a 2 minus, excuse me, if we crisscross them, the actual formula we should get should be MgO. And we're going to see if our data matches that or not. Okay, so underneath, and I want you to write down chemical reaction, so if you didn't write that down, pause it and write it down. All right, the next thing that you need to put into your lab notebooks is where it says calculations. Now for calculations, we're going to label them. If you remember correctly, the first one that we're going to have to find is going to be the mass of the magnesium metal. Okay, this is how we're going to do that. We're going to take, to find the mass of the magnesium metal, we're going to take the mass of the crucible, the lid, and the metal, and we're going to subtract the mass of the crucible and the lid, because if we subtract that out, what we should be left with is the actual mass of magnesium. So I'm going to set this up old school so that we keep significant figures in mind, meaning that I'm going to have point, or sorry, 6.628 grams. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6.000 grams. Remember, with sig figs, we can only report the fewest number of decimal places, which is going to be 3. So my answer is going to be 0.218 grams of magnesium. We want to go ahead and circle that. Okay. All right. The next calculation that we have to do is going to be the mass of the product. Okay. So what was our mass of whatever product that we got in lab. And again, I'm going to take the mass of the crucible, lid, and product, and subtract the mass of the crucible and the lid. <coughs> Oops, there we go. I can only use fewest number of decimal places, so it's going to be 0.336 grams, and that's my mass of product. All right, now the next thing I would have had to do, remember, we're looking for a mole ratio between magnesium and oxygen. Now, we're going to be able to go grams to moles for magnesium, and if you think about when data is given, but we got to get to grams of oxygen first before we can complete the process. And this is how we're going to do this. If we come back to our chemical reaction, in theory, if we know the mass of the magnesium, we know the mass of the product, which should have been larger, which makes sense, that's why this number went up, then if we subtract the numbers between those, what we're going to be left with is the mass of the oxygen. So, if we come back down here, so calculation number three is going to be mass of oxygen. So essentially when that fire combusted, the magnesium attached onto oxygen atoms and formed this new compound which was magnesium oxide. And since we had the bright light, that was our observation that um, a chemical reaction took place. Okay, so we take our 0.336 grams of our product. Okay, we're going to subtract the grams of the magnesium, which was 0.218. And essentially, we're going to be left with oxygen. I know that's not really algebraically correct, but close enough. So we're going to end up with 0.118 grams of oxygen. Okay, now we have grams of oxygen and we have grams of magnesium, so we can go ahead and determine the empirical formula that we would have gotten during this lab. So number, th I have two number threes. Just kidding. Number four <laughs> is going to be a combo. It's going to be grams to moles as well as finding the empirical formula like we did in class the other day. Formula. Okay, so I've got my 0.218 grams of magnesium. I gotta go to moles. I find magnesium on the periodic table. One mole 
of magnesium for 24.31 grams of magnesium. Got to have everything labeled. Divide, I want to carry at least four sig figs here to make my math more accurate, so 0 0.008968. Okay, and then we get this centered because we're going to need them both. I got to do the same thing with oxygen, so 0 0.118 grams of oxygen. One mole of oxygen is going to be 16.00 grams of oxygen. If I divide those, I'm going to get 0 0.0. 07375. Now obviously I can't plug these decimals into my <coughs> excuse me uh, formula so which again I'm trying to solve for X's and O. It should be one to one and we're gonna be close but this is primarily this step right here this is why I chose to do these calculations together this time around because what we need to do here is divide by the smallest so this is gonna be one because we divide it by itself but if I take this one and I do this on my calculator, okay, so if I take 0 0.008968 and divide it by 0 0.007375, okay, I get 1.261. Now that is way not 1.001, so I can't round it. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is say that the 1.201, my choices here, oops, point, ah, uh, well, let me fix this so I don't get everybody messed up, 0.1216, we're going to say that's closer to 1.25. Okay, which is a decimal. Now, since it's a decimal, I have to multiply it by 4, which means I also have to multiply this one by 4. So, my formula that I'm going to get from my data is actually going to be MG5O4. Now, that's pretty close to a 1 to 1. Um, you know, if we carried through the decimal places, it would have been, just to show you, it would have been 1.2 to 1. So that's close enough to 1. This is our experimental value. Again, what we should have gotten was MGO. So when we're writing our lab write-up, we want to think about why it came out this way and why it didn't come out this way. And we'll talk more about that um, as we get through it. Okay, I hope that helps.